everyone. Welcome back to this channel. The train is one of the modes of transportation that has distinct characteristics and advantages, especially in its ability to transport both people and goods on a massive scale, saving energy, minimizing space usage, and having a high level of safety. Renowned for their efficiency, trains seamlessly navigate densely populated urban areas, providing a reliable solution to overcome traffic congestion. Their ability to transport a large number of passengers and goods over long distances not only ensures convenience but also contributes significantly to energy conservation and reduced environmental pollution. To support the operation of trains, the continuous provision of essential components is crucial. One of these components is the train wheel. Train wheels are a specialized type of wheel designed for use on railroad tracks. As trains are guided vehicles, meaning their direction is determined by the tracks. The profile or structure of the wheels becomes crucial. To fulfill this function, train wheels have flanges and cones. The flange is a protective feature protruding on the inside of the wheel to prevent it from derailing, whether on straight tracks or at junctions. Meanwhile, the cone is a sloping, uneven surface on the wheel, serving to provide a speed differential between the wheels. serving as the literal foundation on which the vast machinery of a train rests. These wheels facilitate the smooth transition of locomotives over vast networks of tracks. Their design and durability are paramount, ensuring stability and efficiency even under heavy loads. Train wheels are more than mere mechanical components. They embody the reliability and safety of rail transport. The careful engineering of these wheels not only guarantees a comfortable journey for passengers but also underscores the economic viability and sustainability of rail systems, making them indispensable elements in the intricate tapestry of modern transportation infrastructure. Therefore, let's take a look at how the train wheels are made in a factory located in northern Italy called the Lucchini RS Factory. The process of making train wheels is a sophisticated and intricate series of stages that involve careful planning precision engineering, and quality control. The process begins with the selection of high-quality steel, often an alloy with specific properties suitable for train wheels. The chosen steel is then cut into small pieces, with the best-grade steel being cut into small blocks. The steel is cut using a hard metal disc cutting machine. Afterward, the cut steel blocks will be placed into the first furnace to be heated before forging. The loading and unloading manipulator of the heating furnace is arranged in a specific line to make control easier for the assigned operator. The furnace can be operated and has the capacity to heat steel billets up to 40 tons per hour. These steel billets are heated to a temperature of up to 1,300 degrees Celsius. After exiting the heating furnace, the blocks are then carried by a stationary robot to be forged into their initial shape. The forging machine used for this process can exert a pressing force of 9,000 tons per press. After achieving the initial shape, they are then reinserted into the second forging machine to form the profile of the train wheel. This stage enhances the mechanical properties of the steel, aligns its grain structure, and eliminates any internal defects. Forging is crucial to creating a strong foundation for the next stage. Hydraulic presses and specialized machines are used to shape the semi-finished steel into the characteristic disc shape of train wheels. Precision in this stage is crucial to ensuring uniformity and symmetry in the wheel discs. The profile casting machine that has been used will be cooled again for use in the next block that has been heated. The next stage involves a stationary robot carrying the forged blocks to be placed into the rolling machine. The forged blocks are passed through rolling mills, which consist of sets of rolls or cylinders. These rolls exert pressure on the steel, elongating and shaping it further. The rolling process is designed to reduce the thickness of the steel while maintaining or enhancing its length and width. This reduction in thickness is achieved through the compression and elongation of the material. Rolling mills play a crucial role in achieving uniformity and precision in the dimensions of steel. The process ensures that the steel maintains a consistent thickness and shape across its length. 
the use of robot arms and trained tire manufacturing technology, equipped with advanced tools and sensors, can be employed for machining and processing tasks, saving working time. In this industry, robot arms or robotic technology significantly contribute to precision cutting, shaping, or other processes involved in tire production. Robots equipped with vision systems and sensors can perform quality control checks during and after the manufacturing process. They can identify defects, ensure dimensional accuracy, and enhance overall product quality. The process of making train axles involves several stages, from the selection of materials to the final machining of the axles. The selected steel is cut into appropriate lengths, and the rough shape of the axle is formed through processes such as forging or hot rolling. This initial shaping helps establish the basic structure of the axle. The heated billets are preformed into a rough shape through processes like upsetting and piercing. This initial shaping helps establish the basic structure of the axle. Precision contouring of the axle is achieved through additional forging processes. This may involve using specific dyes to create the desired contours, including the axle journal and wool seat. The forging process for train tire axles aims to produce axles with the required strength, durability, and dimensional accuracy. Advanced forging techniques, including the use of computer-controlled hammers and presses, may be employed to achieve precise and consistent results. The entire process of forging axles is divided into three steps, including upsetting, rounding, and shaping. The formed axle will undergo the next process, which is the axle being inserted into the lathe machine. The axle will be processed with a lathe machine to achieve a smooth, plain, and polished shape. In addition to the axle, the wheel will also be inserted into the lathe machine. The rough machining process of the empty wheel is carried out by a CNC vertical lathe machine to eliminate the oxidized black skin surface from forging and to produce a smooth and polished surface. The wheel and axle are then combined to form a wheel set by being pressed together with a specific force. The wheel set itself is a pair of train vehicle wheels rigidly mounted on an axle in such a way that both wheels rotate simultaneously. To ensure machining accuracy, eliminate error accumulation, and test the strength of the wheel rim, a detailed analysis by engineers is necessary. After going through several production processes and detailed testing, the wheel sets then enter the painting stage and are ready to be assembled into the bogey component. The train wheel sets are installed on the bogey, where typically one bogey has two pairs of wheels or two axles, so each bogey consists of four wheels. For lay people, the term bogey may still sound unfamiliar. 
A bogey is a construction consisting of two or more wheel sets combined by a frame equipped with suspension, braking systems, with or without propulsion, and anti-slip devices. The entire assembly functions as a support for the basic frame of the train body. The bogey can be detached and reattached during maintenance. The main function of the bogey is to provide flexibility for the train on the tracks, allowing the wheels to follow the direction of the tracks during curves. When the train travels on tracks that curve, an angle is formed between the straight line of the train body and the tracks. In this situation, contact occurs between the flange and the tracks on one side of the wheel. In trains without a bogey, this angle is limited because the wheels will always be aligned with the train body. Consequently, when the flange can no longer restrain the tracks, the wheels will ride up on the tracks, leading to derailment. With the presence of a bogey, the wheels are not aligned with the train body but have a certain angle, allowing the wheels to navigate curves without derailing or lifting off the tracks. In addition to flexibility, the bogey can also dampen the effects caused by uneven tracks. The center point of the bogey, known as the center pivot, will distribute the deflection that occurs between its two wheels. This results in the train being more stable, even on uneven or undulating tracks. In passenger trains, the bogey is designed not only for safety but also to enhance comfort. That's why the bogey for passenger trains consists of two springs that can absorb wheel vibrations and shocks, making them almost imperceptible inside the passenger compartment. Meanwhile, the bogey for freight cars has a simpler construction, generally consisting of a single level of suspension. This is because freight car bogies do not prioritize comfort unless it is for special cargo transport that requires a low level of vibration and oscillation, similar to passenger trains.